Hello Airsoft friends and welcome to this video today where I'm going to be giving you some feedback from feedback that I gave to Novrich. Essentially when I received my SSG96 uh, I felt like I was experiencing a couple of issues with it so I put some feedback together and then I sent it across to the Novrich company and then Chris himself, Mr. Novrich man, he then recorded a, uh, a voice note thing going through all of my feedback letting me know what his thoughts were and where they kind of like stood on those things which was rather lovely. It's always nice when people take time out of their day to you know reply and respond to feedback and things like that so that's really really nice to see. As a quick note for you guys for like full transparency, the SSG 96 I paid for out of my own money. The SSG 10, which I'll be doing a follow-up video on with, they actually sent to me out of the kindness of their hearts. But whether or not I paid for it or whether or not I get things like sent to me, I'm not gonna, you know, sway my feedback at all. This whole video is about issues, problems, or feedback that I've had with their products, and uh, I, I'd like to know more about it, or potentially help them address them as well. So, yeah, always gonna be honest, and, you know, I, I think it's something that they appreciate. I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't torn them a new one about anything yet. I've just made some recommendations of where things could be improved, but I know I can get quite annoying like that because I'm quite hard-headed and I like things a certain way. You're welcome, Nobridge. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. So the first thing I said to them was that the SSG96 magazine capacity is tiny, and it is. You only get 21 rounds per magazine, and for me as a sniper, that's just not enough, you know. I want more. I want to be able to send more BBs downrange. And uh, to be honest, Novrich actually agreed with that. He did say that the, the magazine capacity was small, and they did think about making a bigger magazine, but it would have resulted in more tooling costs, which then would have meant that the magazine would have had to have been more expensive, which and meant buying the rifle would have been more expensive, and they wanted to try and keep the magazine size down as much as possible. On that note though, if you do want to get a bigger magazine, the Action Army SSG 96 foot magazine takes 40 BBs. So that's almost double the capacity of the stock one that comes with it. And uh, yeah, apparently that it can either work straight out the box or you may need to do a couple of modifications. Either way, check out the Tridos design video on them. He goes through the, the magazine, does a comparison, and yeah, check it out. Thanks for doing that, Tridos. Next up was the SSG 96 weight. I said it's very heavy, which it is. And he said it was as well. He said it was a very heavy rifle. They did think about making the bipods connectory standy bit out of plastic instead of metal to help save some weight but then it would have made it not as strong and they want to make sure that everything is strong and works well and to be honest the L96 is kind of like a heavy rifle anyway so if people did want it but they didn't like the fact that it was heavy then they could instead opt for the SSG-10 which is a much lighter rifle and I, and I kind of agree with that because if the weight of the SSG-96 is too much for you and you're not really tied into you know the fact that you want a sniper rifle that is that exact model then it's fine to go for another one if you've got your heart set on having a uh, an L96 replica rifle then you know the extra weight isn't going to bother you that much because you're just going to love the fact that you're using it so yeah all good on that I think that's fair next up I said about the SSG-96 spring wobble he agreed that there is spring wobble on the SSG-96, so that's good. And he said the reason why is because the spring guide is designed to take any spring from M90 to M220. And depending on the, 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 the power of the spring, he said that you've got a different size coil. So a, a small spring, that, which is, you know, a less powerful spring is smaller than, uh, than, a, than a lot more, more powerful spring, which is going to be bigger. And what they've wanted to do is they wanted to make their guns universal across everything. So any of those springs from M90 to 220, you can put any of those into any of their rifles. And I like the fact that they've done that because it means that, say, I wanted to, you know, run my SSG-10 or my SSG-96, if I wanted to run one of them sub-350, I can just swap the spring out and I don't have to worry about, you know, if the spring guard is going to fit or, or anything like that. I can kind of see a little bit though, like, it's probably better for the manufacturing side of things as opposed to the end user because you're not really too likely to want to go too far across the spring spectrum when you're changing the spring in your rifle. Like usually, you know, my field limits are 500, so if my spring I get with it is too powerful or slightly under, then I'm only gonna wanna go a little bit each way. But I guess it is for the end user too, because if they weren't making it universal, then they would have more production costs in doing different size spring guides, different size springs, and then as an end user, we're then gonna have to pay more money for that thing. So having that universality, it makes it easier for them in terms of production and it makes it cheaper overall. 
And to be fair, I, I think that that's okay. I think it's okay to have a bit of spring wobble, especially because it's something which is solvable by either putting heat shrink wrap on it or by putting some tape on the uh, on the spring guide, which I've done. So yeah, it's not ideal, but at the same time, I'd rather save some money. The next thing I gave feedback on was on the SSG96, the cylinder was cutting into the upper receiver and I could see the material had been removed and it was caused from the cylinder bending um, and then the cutout bit for it kind of coming apart and then stretching through into the receiver. And uh, yeah, Novo, Novo, <laughs> that's my nickname from now. And Nov Rich did say that that happens uh, naturally, that they bulge in the middle due to material tension, which makes sense because there's like what, spring tension in the middle forcing it. So it, it makes sense that it would kind of like bend in the middle naturally. However, with the SSG96, because there's no glide ring in the back, so the cylinder is just running in the metal of the receiver, it's much more noticeable. He said that other rifles that have a front and back glide ring, you don't really notice it that much because the cylinder is away from the metal, which, yeah, that, that does make sense. It's suspended in the air, so it's not gonna be able to touch the, um, the, the receiver. The benefit of not having a rear glide ring in the SSG96 is that it makes the rifle quieter as there's no air pockets around the cylinder. And again, that does make sense because like with the SSG10 and you know every VSR, because you've got the glide rings in there, you you're gonna have more space of air around the cylinder where you could potentially get echoes when you when you do fire the rifle. So the SSG 96 should be quieter as a result of not having those. They did try to make it better, but once it wears in and a little bit of material is removed, which does happen quite fast, it runs smooth. And I can account for that. Like my one, I think I was quite vocal about it when I received it saying that the, the bolt pull wasn't as smooth as I would have liked it to have been. However, after running it for, well, I ran it for two game days and then just kind of like cocking it in here every now and again. And uh, yeah, like it's super smooth now. It's one of the smoothest bolts I have on any of my rifles. And it did take a little bit of time to get there, but now super smooth. Love it, really, really, really love it. Also, I changed the way that I cock it. Instead, I come up from the bottom and do it like that now, and ah, oh, it's lovely. So yeah, try that too if you're having issues. He did also say that it could be better, but from a technical perspective, it would be very hard to do. And yeah, I'd imagine there would probably be more machining costs involved in doing that as well, which is then gonna make the overall price of the rifle more, and that's not what they wanna do. So yeah, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Maybe with stuff like that, there would be potential to have like a kind of, I don't know, like a, a notice or um, like a guide that comes with it to say, by the way, this is what your experience is gonna be like. It's okay, once it's all worn in, blah, 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 then it'll be fine. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe some kind of messaging like that will be handy. And lastly, I said to him that the SSG96 was quite hot out of the box, which he did agree with. He said that they are hot generally out of the box. It's something that they need to control better and are already working on this. So that's good to see. But he did go on to say that they'd rather the guns be too hot rather than underpowered because you can just cut the spring down, which is what I actually did with mine on the game day. I got there, chronoed it, realized it was quite a bit under, over even. So I asked around, found someone with some snips and then yeah, cut the spring down, tested it, cut it down, tested it until I got to the point where I was within the limits and yeah, we're all good to go at that point. So I can understand it. It does make sense to make it hotter rather than not. So then you can tweak it for free because if it's underpowered, you're gonna have to buy a new spring and that's extra cost which they don't want you to have. They'd rather you, you know, work with what you've got. Now he did say that is the case apart from for the one dual versions available because those ones, if they are over, then that's not good at all <laughs> because the way you're playing with them, you've got those hard limits and then it becomes more of like a legal issue, I believe. So the one dual ones, they do rather than be under the knot um, for the whole, you know, safety aspect of it and le legal aspect of it, which again, completely makes sense. And if you then wanna buy a spring, put it in, put you over and then cut it down to get the absolute perfect FPS, that's your, that's your decision to do. So yeah, I, I think that that is the right and fair way to look at those things. And um, yeah, I think that's really cool. As a note as well, uh, at the end of the, the voice note, he said to me that he was always open to feedback for the rifles and that he thanked me for, for giving him the feedback as well. Because it's things like this where he's in the very much in the same mindset as I am with my products in that he wants to know what people's feedback is because if there's common themes or common issues, then that's something he can look into and fix so then other people don't experience similar things as well in the future. So yeah, if you have any feedback, then please do let them know, of course, in a constructive way. That would be lovely. 
Or if you have any questions or comments about the SSG96 or of the any other Novrich rifles or guns out there, please do leave them in the comments below because I can collate them together, pass them on, and uh, yeah, see if we can get some more feedback uh, on those done for you. I am going to be doing a follow-up video on this about the SSG10 because I submitted some feedback for that too. So that's something which I want to pass on to you. And if there's any issues there which you guys have had with that rifle, then hopefully then this will help resolve it or give you an idea into what they're doing and why they're doing it and, you know, the thought process behind it. That being said, I want to say a huge thank you to all of my lovely patrons out there. You are wonderful. Thank you so much for supporting the channel month on month. I really do genuinely appreciate it. You're all lovely people. And I want to give a very special shout out as well to the Stay Fresh Shoot Airsoft Discord group because it has been growing like day on day. There's always new members coming in. There's conversations always going, people posting pictures of their riffs, of their guns, of their collections, like just of their kit, everything in there. It's awesome. It's wonderful to see. And I think that there are some real, real solid friendships being, being made in that group. And yeah, it's just lovely. So thank you guys for taking part and getting involved. And if any of you out there watching now would like to get involved too, the Discord link is in the, um, it's below. It's, it's in the description. So yeah, hit that, join that. Enjoy, get involved, get stuck in, and uh, I'll see you over there on the Discord. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. Remember to call your hits, and I'll see you in the next one.